The fastest growing black hole has been discovered by scientists. It consumes the equivalent of one Earth every second. It weighs the equivalent of three billion suns. It's quite dark in space. Nevertheless, certain regions are dimmer than others. A black hole is the darkest place there is. Nothing can escape a black hole because of its extreme gravity, not even light. Some stars die and turn into black holes. The star's energy dissipates and it collapses in on itself, creating a beautiful explosion. Now comes the insanity. The leftover material from the explosion, which is equivalent to countless suns, collapses into an infinitesimally small point. The mass of our sun can be confined to a point that is smaller than the tip of a pin in massive black holes, which can arise in a variety of ways. Some black holes grow in bulk and begin to trap more and more matter. Fortunately, using the James Webb Space Telescope, researchers have captured the first picture of a black hole, as well as the most remote active supermassive black hole to date. So what does a black hole actually look like? Is the universe in danger of being devoured by supermassive black holes? Let's find out. Astronomers have known for a long time about the existence of black holes, those strange locations in space from which nothing, not even light, can escape, and their influence on their environs. The common misconception was that it was impossible to take a picture of a black hole because an object from which no light could escape would appear dark in any photograph. The problem scientists faced was how to photograph hot, incandescent gas plunging into a black hole from thousands or millions of light years distant. A group of worldwide scientists has achieved the previously unthinkable by capturing a photograph of a black hole's silhouette. Despite scientists' hopes that they could photograph black holes by taking pictures of their outlines against their brilliant backgrounds, they have not yet succeeded in doing so. To meet this problem, a group of scientists banded together and built the Event Horizon Telescope, EHT, a network of telescopes. They attempted to take a picture of a black hole by refining a method called Very Long Baseline Interferometry, VLBI, which is used to take pictures of distant objects. All kinds of telescopes are employed to see distant objects. The telescope's capacity to gather more light and its resolution, or capacity to capture minute details, increase with its diameter or aperture. We need to gather as much light as possible with very high resolution. Hence, we need to use a telescope with a huge aperture in order to discern features in objects that are far away and appear small and dim from Earth. For this reason, the VLBI method was crucial in obtaining the picture of the black hole. With VLBI, a network of smaller telescopes may be coordinated to concentrate on the same object at the same time, generating the effect of a single much larger virtual telescope. Even the smaller telescopes are sometimes made up of a larger collection of telescopes working together. This method has been used to picture quasars and other extremely distant radio emitters in the cosmos. More than a dozen antennas face forward on an otherwise empty landscape with distant red and blue purple mountains. In the case of the Event Horizon Telescope, EHT, the distance between the two most distant telescope sites, one at the South Pole and one in Spain, determines the aperture of the telescope, which is almost the same as the diameter of the Earth. Each telescope in the array is pointed at the subject, in this case, the black hole, and gathers data from its position on Earth to contribute to the overall picture provided by the Event Horizon Telescope, EHT. The higher the resolution, the more telescopes should be widely distributed in the array. The Event Horizon Telescope team chose two targets, each presenting its own unique challenges to put VLBI for black hole imaging and a number of computer techniques for sorting and synchronizing data to the test. The researchers were particularly interested in Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy, which is only 26,000 light years away. This black hole is the largest one visible from Earth, yet it is not the only one in our galaxy. However, because it is in the same galaxy as Earth, scientists will need to filter out more data in order to see it clearly because of the pollution generated by stars and dust. Nonetheless, the EHT team selected Sagittarius A as one of its two targets because of the black hole's local interest and relatively enormous size. M87, a supermassive black hole, was the second target. At the heart of the enormous elliptical galaxy, Messier 87, M87, about 53 million light-years away, 
is the supermassive black hole M87 asterisk, one of the largest such objects known. M87 has 6.5 billion solar masses, making it significantly more massive than Sagittarius A's 4 million solar masses. The fact that M87 is an active black hole with matter flowing into it and spewing out in the form of jets of particles accelerated to velocities approaching the speed of light, peaking the attention of scientists even more than its enormous size. However, it was considerably more difficult to catch than the nearby Sagittarius A asterisk due to its great distance. Katie Booman, an EHT computer scientist who oversaw the creation of an algorithm used to sift telescope data during the processing of the historic photograph, likened the feat to taking a picture of an orange on the moon's surface. The EHT required extremely precise timing, with each telescope synchronized to within a few hundredths of a millisecond using atomic clocks tied onto the GPS. The EHT can resolve objects with an accuracy around 4,000 times greater than that of the Hubble Space Telescope. Each telescope captured its time-stamped digital data acquisitions from the target black hole on a separate computer disk. The crew had a large amount of data to process after collecting it for four days across the globe. Since the existing internet speeds cannot manage the massive amount of data, about 5 petabytes, the recorded media had to be physically transferred to a central place. All eight stations' data were synchronized using the timestamps and used to generate a composite set of photos, which revealed the previously unseen silhouette of M87's event horizon. In addition, they labored to create an image of Sagittarius A using data from the EHT. The black hole mass was calculated more precisely than ever before thanks to the EAT black hole imaging experiment. The EHT allowed researchers to see and estimate M87's event horizon radius, also known as the Schwarzschild radius, and hence determine the black hole's mass. The method was validated as a means of mass estimation since it produced an estimate that was close to that obtained using a method that employs the motion of circling stars. A black hole's mass and spin allow its size and shape to be predicted using general relativity. Although various theories of gravity predict somewhat different shapes, General relativity suggests that this silhouette would be about round. The circular silhouette shown in the photograph of M87 supports Einstein's general theory of relativity around black holes. Black hole structures, including the accretion disk that feeds matter into the black hole and the plasma jets that radiate from its center, are also illuminated by the data, providing clues to their birth and activity. The formation of an accretion disk has long been the subject of speculation among scientists, but until recently, no direct observation has allowed them to test these ideas. The mechanism by which some supermassive black holes release huge jets of particles moving at almost the speed of light is likewise of great interest to scientists. However, using the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists have uncovered the most distant active supermassive black hole yet found. Sears 1019 the host galaxy of the ancient black hole originated not long after the Big Bang, only 570 million years ago. Sears 1019 hosts an active supermassive black hole that is 9 million solar masses, or 9 million times heavier than the Sun, making it one of the lightest such objects known. Supermassive black holes in the early universe often have masses greater than 1 billion solar masses, making them far more luminous and hence easier to detect. It's a bit puzzling that the black hole at the center of Sears 1019 is so small. The Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, which oversees JWST's science operations, said in a statement that, it is still difficult to explain how it formed so soon after the universe began. Astronomers have long suspected that smaller black holes must have formed in the early days of the universe, but these observations are the first to see them in such detail. For a long time, scientists have known that the early cosmos must have had lower mass black holes. The first observatory to be able to capture them with such clarity is Webb. Theoretically, lower mass black holes could be hiding everywhere, just waiting to be found, according to experts. The Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science, Sears Survey, a research project intended to test and validate methods to peer far back into the history of the universe in a region of space between the constellations of Ursa Major and Boots, led to the discovery of the black hole in Sears 1019, using data gathered by the James Webb Space Telescope. Astronomers are ecstatic about the survey's data so far. Up until now, 
most early universe object research has been speculative. We can now begin to precisely measure black holes and galaxies thanks to Webb, in addition to seeing them at great distances. That is the telescope's extraordinary power. The electromagnetic signals of Sears 1019, which indicate the chemical composition, mass, and other characteristics of the galaxy, allowed JWST to gather an abundance of spectrum data. The results show that the galaxy is actively generating new stars, possibly as a result of a galaxy merger that is supplying energy to the core black hole of Sears 1019. The search discovered two other lightweights, supermassive black holes with lesser masses than what is generally seen in black holes at that distance, in addition to the black hole at the heart of Sears 1019. These two black holes created 1.1 billion years and 1 billion years after the Big Bang, respectively, and are located at the centers of the galaxies Sears 2782 and Sears 746. Each is roughly 10 million solar masses in weight. Sagittarius A, the name of the supermassive black hole at the center of our own Milky Way galaxy, is 4.3 million times more massive than the Sun. But for a current supermassive black hole, that's rather light. For instance, the galaxy M87's behemoth has roughly 6.5 billion solar masses. Overall, 11 galaxies that are expected to have originated between 470 and 675 million years after the Big Bang have been found using JWST's CRS survey data. Astronomers' understanding of how stars and galaxies developed and changed throughout cosmic history may be fundamentally altered by the data generated by the study of these galaxies, according to experts. These statistics are astounding in every way. Meanwhile, supermassive black holes might theoretically get even more massive. There are some gigantic black holes in our cosmos. Despite having a mass of 4 million suns, the supermassive black hole at the heart of our galaxy is relatively modest compared to other galactic black holes. The largest gigantic black hole known is thought to have a mass of close to 70 billion suns, and many galactic black holes have a billion solar masses. But how huge can a black hole really grow? A black hole needs to ingest a lot of matter early in its life in order to become extremely large. The cosmos will have expanded and the surrounding galaxy will have settled into place if the black hole consumes matter slowly, limiting the amount of matter it can absorb. However, when a black hole quickly eats a large amount of matter, the substance becomes extremely hot and tends to push other matter away, making it more challenging for the black hole to grow. The maximum mass for galactic black holes is estimated to be roughly 100 billion solar masses based on observations of the largest black holes and computer models of black hole formation. However, according to a recent study, the mass ceiling could be substantially greater. Although galactic black holes generally have a mass limit of 100 billion solar masses, the study cautions that larger black holes could have developed independently during the early stages of the cosmos. These ancient black holes may be a million times more massive than the biggest galaxy's black holes. They are known as slabs, or stupendously large black holes, by the research team. Primordial black holes are a concept that has been around for a while. They have been suggested as a solution for a variety of issues, including dark matter and the enigma of the alleged ninth planet in our solar system. However, theoretical models have predicted that primordial black holes created from minute density fluctuations in the early cosmos would be substantially smaller than even stellar mass black holes. However, this new research implies that some of them might grow astronomically enormous due to dark matter and other considerations. A primordial black hole might quickly absorb dark matter if the early universe was abundant in dark matter, especially the type of dark matter known as weakly interacting massive particles, WIMPs. Dark matter doesn't interact with light very strongly. Thus, the captured dark matter wouldn't produce a lot of heat or light to slow down the growth rate. Therefore, even before the cosmos cooled and galaxies emerged, these black holes might have been enormous. If we find any stupendously large black holes, it might help us comprehend dark matter because the upper mass limit of stupendously large black holes would rely on how weakly interacting massive particles dark matter interacts with itself. There are no stupendously large black holes that we have seen so far. They might be residing deep within far-off galaxies, but they might also be prowling the enormous area between galactic groupings, or perhaps they don't. However, 
it's worthwhile to search for them because making one would be a genuinely amazing discovery. Will supermassive black holes consume the universe? According to new research, the greatest black holes grow larger than their host galaxies. Black holes expanded more quickly relative to the rate at which stars were born in larger galaxies. The results of the other study showed that supermassive black hole masses are around 10 times bigger than would be predicted if the central black holes of the galaxies they inhabit expanded at the same pace. There are two basic reasons why astronomers are interested in the interactions between black holes and the galaxies they host. First, even if they can't directly measure it, scientists can estimate, for example, the mass of a supermassive black hole if they can compute the size of one object based on another. The laws governing how galaxies are generated can also be explained by any regularities between the two. The study's team discovered that the ratio between a galaxy's black hole growth rate and its star growth rate increased with galaxy size. A galaxy with a solar mass equal to 100 billion Earth suns has a solar mass ratio that is 10 times greater than that of a galaxy with a solar mass equal to 10 billion suns. According to the study report, larger galaxies are better able to feed their black holes than smaller galaxies. Thus, those massive galaxies eventually develop enormous black holes. Whether black holes can impact galaxy formation in turn, though, remains a mystery. Another study discovered that the stranger the galaxy's interaction with its black hole, the larger the galaxy was. The Institute of Space Sciences in Barcelona, Spain, under the direction of astronomer Mar Mesqua, concentrated that study on 72 galaxies that were no farther than 3.5 billion light-years from Earth. They were all brightest cluster galaxies, the largest and brightest galaxies in the local cosmos. The researchers compared the masses of supermassive black holes to predictions made using conventional methods that assumed that black holes and their galaxies grow roughly at the same rate. They used X-ray and radio wave data from the Chandra X-ray Observatory, the Australia Telescope Compact Array, the Carl G. Jansky Very Large Array, and the Very Long Baseline Array. The research team found that the black holes in their investigation were 10 times larger than would have been expected using conventional methods, as opposed to seeing the two expanding in lockstep. In reality, a large number of them met the criteria for both supermassive and ultramassive black holes, the latter of which can have a mass up to 40 billion times that of the Sun. Supermassive black holes have a mass of a few billion solar masses. The researchers revealed that no one had previously realized that the brightest cluster galaxies could harbor such huge black holes. There were two possible routes for the black holes to develop, they claimed. One idea is that the galaxy grew after the black hole expanded. Another idea is that these black holes are offspring of seed black holes that originated when galaxies were significantly more youthful and star formation active. The fact remains, nevertheless, that black holes and the galaxies they host are not usually born together. We can now begin to precisely measure black holes and galaxies thanks to the James Webb Telescope, in addition to seeing them at great distances. That is the telescope's extraordinary power. Future studies may also revise models of how black holes developed in the first several hundred million years of the universe's existence in order to understand how early black holes developed. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.